Hey guys, in this project, as I said in the intro, we're going to be building a bookmark manager called Marks Manager. And we're going to use Postgres in this, or PostgreSQL, which is an alternative to something like MySQL. It's a relational database. It's cross-platform, so you can install it on whatever system you're using. Um, so we're going to get that set up, and then there's some things we need to do to configure Laravel to work with Postgres, um, because by default it's going to be... Uh, it uses the MySQL driver, so we'll get into that after, but let's go ahead and get it installed. So I'm at PostgreSQL.org, and I'm going to go to Download, and then from here, I'm on Windows, so I'm going to go, I'm going to click on Windows right here, and there's an installer that we can download, so we'll click this link. Okay, it's select a version. I'm going to, I'm going to choose the latest version. At this time, it's 9.6.3. Yours may be different depending on when you're watching this. All right, and I'm using a 64-bit system, so I'm going to click download now, and then the exe file should start to download. Okay, which in this case is 164 megabytes, so it may take a minute or so to download. All right, so let's go ahead and open that up. So we'll say yes. All right, so we're going to go through this installer here. Let's click Next. This is going to be the installation directory. It's going to be in the program files. And then the data directory, we'll keep that. Click Next. We're going to provide a password for the super user. Now, the super user is actually going to be Postgres. With MySQL, it's root, but with Postgres, it's going to be just Postgres. So let's put a password in here. And click Next. Okay, the default port is going to be 5432. You want to keep that. We'll click Next. Uh, I'm just going to click Next, Default Locale. And the setup is now ready to begin, so we'll click Next, and now it's going to go ahead and uh, create all the files and so on. All right, so that took a couple minutes. Now we've come to the end of it, and it's asking if we want to launch Stack Builder at the exit. So I'm going to keep that checked just to show you what it does. Um, so basically, Let's see, we can choose our server right here and click Next. There's basically a, a whole bunch of tools and add-ons that you can install with Postgres using this stack builder. So let me just expand these. So for instance, we have add-ons, tools, and utilities, uh, language pack, PG agent, which is a job scheduling agent for Postgres, uh, and we're not going to need that. All right, PG bouncer, which is... Um, it's a connection pooler for Postgres. I'm not going to get any of this stuff. I just wanted to show you database server. We have different different versions. Um, enterprise tools. A lot of these uh, I'm not even familiar with. If we look at web development, we can also get an uh, Apache web server with PHP if we wanted. But I'm not going to check off any of these. The only tool that we're going to need is PG Admin, and that's going to come with this by default. So let's just go ahead and click Next. Uh, well, actually, we have to click cancel because I'm not installing any of this. And then we're just going to close the stack builder. All right. Now, if we go down here and we say PG, oops, you should have this PG admin 4 or, or possibly later, depending on when you're watching this video. All right. And if we go ahead and run that, this is basically like... Um, it's similar to PHP MyAdmin, which is what we've been using for MySQL. It's a graphical interface to do things like create databases, create tables, view your data, all that stuff. Okay, but it's a desktop utility. It's not um, a, a web-based utility. And what we're going to do here is just create a database to work with. So let me just make this a little bigger. All right, and it's pretty pretty easy to use. I mean, I think it's a little more difficult than PHP MyAdmin, but it's not too bad. If we click on servers, you should have a server, which is whatever the version of Postgres. If we click on this, it's going to ask for the password for the Postgres user, which is basically the root user. And we chose that when we installed it. So I'm going to type that in and I'll just save it and click OK. And now we're in our server. Now, if we look at databases, there's a default database called Postgres, but what we want to do is create a new database for our application. So let's go ahead and just right click, we'll say create database. And let's just call this 
we're going to call it marks manager because that's the name of the application as for the owner i'm just going to leave it as postgres and then let's see if we go to definition we don't need any of that stuff uh, that should be that should do it yeah so this gives us the actual sql it's going to create the database with the owner of postgres it's going to use utf uh, utf8 encoding so let's go ahead and click save and then that will create our database okay so you can see we can expand it now and there's all types of stuff here uh, most of this stuff is is more advanced and doesn't really pertain to to this course uh, but if we click on schemas and then public and down here is where you'll see tables okay so when you create a table it's going to go in here and you'll be able to view the data uh, view the data types and all that stuff all right now we're going to be doing everything through laravel migrations which is great because we don't have to do anything on the database side just like we didn't with mysql we had migrations actually create our tables and all that um, so that makes it very flexible in terms of what uh, what database you use with Laravel. It's basically going to be the same process no matter what. As long as you install the system like we just did and set up the initial database, the rest is going to be the exact same in most cases. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. Now that we have uh, PG Admin and Postgres installed, we're going to, in the next video, create our Laravel application and I'll show you how to configure it to use Postgres instead of MySQL.